welcome back to another vlog. Um, I know most of my videos recently have been me filming myself going to the theatre or just putting up theatre videos, but surprise, that's what we're doing again here today. Oh well, I enjoy it, so there we are. I am in London right now, I have just arrived today and I have quite a few shows that I'm going to during the time that I'm here. Um, I have three shows currently. I'm looking at a fourth one, possibly, during rush tickets. But yeah, I'm very excited about it. They're shows that I've wanted to see for quite a while. Two of them are closing permanently. So I'm very excited to go and see them all. Tonight I'm seeing Dear Evan Hansen, um, which I've heard nothing but good things about. So can't wait for that. Tomorrow is a very, very exciting show, Hamilton. I have wanted to see that show for a very, very long time and tickets for that are so hard to come by and also so expensive, but I finally plucked up the courage to go ahead and book myself tickets to them. So that's what I'm going to go see. Tomorrow as well I might try and squeeze in another one. Frozen I'm looking at for rush tickets. We'll see though, I haven't decided about that one yet, but if I do, then I will be sure to take you along with me. If I don't, then that's fine, I can <laughs> sleep in. And then on Friday I have come from away. So yeah, um, I know a little bit about that, but not too much. But I have heard that it's supposed to be incredible. So I'm excited about that one. Because I haven't got anything else planned during the day on Friday, I'm like show-wise, I decided that I would go and take myself to the Wallace collection um, because they've got a Disney exhibition there right now. It's Walt Disney inspired by French art or something like that and it's got a lot of artwork, original artwork from different movies and it's got props and just really exciting Disney things and we all know how I feel about Disney. So I'm excited to go there too and just enjoy myself. Yeah, you will come along with me and I'll show you around when I'm here. So yeah, enjoy. Hi everyone. Uh, I know the clip you just saw said it was September and it was Thursday, but it's actually currently um, a Monday in December. So basically what happened was I was editing this video that you're watching right now in like October, which you know, not as bad uploading a video and like editing it like a month after the events actually happened. But here I am in December, um, putting off editing the video because I had a couple of clips that I'd filmed on my phone of me like talking to the camera um, about my thoughts, feelings, emotions, whatever about the shows that I saw, like post seeing them. Um, they just weren't the best quality. I think because it was, a longer video that I had made on my phone when it came to like exporting it to my computer and then putting it through the video video editing software that I use it just wasn't good which was annoying because I was so excited to like put this video up quicker and like not so long in between going to see the show and having everything fresh in my memory and then uploading it and it being uploaded like a month later, but here we are in December. So I literally had to sit and rewatch the video I made the day after seeing um, Dear Evan Hansen um, that I can't use in the video anymore now um, and made notes <laughs> of everything that I said in it because I can't remember what I said in that video now. And I can't remember, well I know what I was feeling after seeing the show, but I can't remember the exact like immediate raw thoughts that I was feeling. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes about what I said about watching the show so yeah sorry about that I'm sorry that the video has been delayed going up but it is what it is technology do be technology sometimes and sometimes it doesn't always go right on this occasion that is the case of what happened let's talk about my post show thoughts for Dear Evan Hansen overall I thought it was a really good show I really enjoyed it um I knew the basic premise of the show uh, I'd listened to the soundtrack and everything and like knew the songs but I didn't like fully well I knew the story like I knew what generally happened but I didn't know like the full extent of like everything I also didn't realize the company was so small I didn't realize there was only eight people in it in total obviously 
I should have known really because every time they performed like outside of the theatre like for instance like on West End Live or if they were on like a TV show or something obviously it was only ever those eight people but I just always assumed that it was just like the main characters that were on it and like the ensemble weren't performing on any of like the live televised stuff but no it's just, just they had those eight people there because those were the only eight people in the cast and i was so impressed by that i just i never realized it especially because like on the soundtrack it sounds so much more fuller it sounds more than eight people but when you see it live i'm just it blew me away i was like oh my gosh these eight people are carrying the whole show and they're absolutely incredible and and it's just so good so i really loved that we had on the day that i went to see dear evan hansen the alternate evan we did not have Sam Tutty, I'm trying to look for my program. Um, yeah, I didn't see Sam Tutty playing Evan Hansen, unfortunately, he wasn't there that day. I don't know if I just went on a day where he wasn't on or if he was ill, but we had, where is he? This guy right here, which is Marcus Harmon, who is alternate Evan Hansen. And I will say, I think he was, thought he was so good. He was such a good Evan, like, obviously the character is, um, like very quirky, um, a little bit kooky, a little bit weird, um, a bit of an outcast and I thought he played that so well and he was so good and also really funny and I, I don't know, I just really loved the way he played Evan and the way that he, you know, his take on the character. It was a nice surprise, I didn't know that we were going to get the alternate Evan but we, we did and I don't have anything against alternates or understudies or swings or whoever has to go on i think it's always so exciting when that happens um because that happened <laughs> throughout all of the shows i saw actually while i was in london um seeing those three shows so yeah it was it's just it adds another element to your show like it's cool isn't it um yeah on to other uh things that i enjoyed about the show which was the guy who played jared i'd mentioned obviously that i found marcus Harmon as um evan funny but the guy who plays jared which is jack loxton so funny um obviously i knew that character was funny anyway judging by like sincerely me but yeah I, I just loved him i just thought he was really really good and i'm so glad i got to see him as jared because he is a breath of fresh air wonderful such a good actor um and a really good jared the show obviously it deals with some like really heavy topics and it was a very emotionally charged show. I knew that going into it and I knew that, you know, it would be quite upsetting. And I wasn't gonna be sat there like having and joking the whole time, like, oh my God, it's so funny. But I felt like the lighthearted and more humorous moments definitely helped with that. And characters like Jared and like some of the funny little moments that Evan have really helped with that. And I thought they were very much needed. I enjoyed them. Let's talk about the songs, which obviously I said I'd listen to the soundtrack. So I knew that they were amazing, but seeing them live just, it's different you know what i mean it's just a different vibe and a different feel because the actors are in the moment and they're feeling these emotions and sometimes they might sing it slightly differently to the way that you're used to hearing it on the soundtracks and i just thought that all of them were so incredible i loved evan's songs obviously some of them are like so iconic and i felt like Marcus did such a good job at singing those songs. He had such a powerful voice. Obviously, Evan's songs are not easy to sing at all, like they're in that higher range for the male voice a lot of the time. And he did it so well, and I just was so impressed by him. I just thought he was incredible. And I'm so glad that I got to see him as alternate Evan because yeah, he was very, very good. And as well as him being really good, I found that when everybody was singing together and like the ensemble pieces and they had a lot of strength in those i just thought that they when they all came together i love harmonizing in, in songs anyway like i love when like there's lots of different vocal arrangements and like harmonies and everybody comes together and sings i just love it it gives me goosebumps but in the show it really it made me feel all of the feels and i did have all of those goosebumps and i just thought it was so good and i noticed it specifically at first in waving through a window I was blown away by that and I knew from that moment onward that I was in for a treat. Sincerely Me was really funny. Obviously, like I said, the guy who plays Jared was in that funny. But also the guy who played um, Connor, also really good. Like, obviously, you know, he's not a very happy little character, but in that song, he was very good. So um, I thought that was a nice moment to sort of break away from all of like the sad parts of the show. It was a welcome relief 
comic relief moment there. And then uh, obviously you will be found the sort of standout song from the show really, isn't it? Everybody knows you will be found, everybody loves you will be found and boy was it good. Um, I was holding it together so well up until that point. I hadn't really cried much. Obviously I'd been like, there'd been moments where I was like reduced to some tears forming, but I didn't, I didn't, didn't cry yet. And then <laughs> this song came um, and I just found it so emotional. Hadn't seen it staged before. So I had heard the song and I'd seen them perform it at like West End Live or like on TV shows or whatever, but I hadn't seen it staged. So like I was doing so well, obviously I was like, oh, it's a good song and I'm loving it. Uh, but I didn't realize that like at the end of the song, the dad like collapses to his knees and like with emotion because obviously at that point of the show up until then we hadn't seen much emotion from him he was trying to hold it together and he was sort of like being very like not really giving anything away and then when he um dropped to his knees and like was like bursting into tears and finally letting him feel all of, the, all of those emotions throughout that song it just broke me it absolutely broke me so thanks for that <laughs> wasn't expecting that um but yeah connor's dad made me very very big sad in that moment and then I finally did like ball it was a good time so that was that song and I loved hearing that live and then another song that I really loved was good for you I knew that it was going to be a big like moment in the show and like a big powerful moment like where the characters were like standing up and finally being like actually no the way that you're treating us is not good but I didn't realize how good and how like hard it was gonna go like it was just I loved it it was a big moment and I very much enjoyed it and obviously they do this quite a lot in the show uh, a lot of the time like Evan will be singing and then they'll sort of like crowd around him and like they'll either be like singing at him or like harmonizing with him um, but in this moment they were yelling at him and like like getting really getting up in his face Evan was getting very flustered and like being like oh I'm sorry like I don't know why I made you feel like this but I have made you feel like this and everyone's like you know what like so you got what you always wanted and now you're here and this is what you're making us feel about it and i just thought that it was a chef's kiss moment and also the lighting choices in that song were very good so that was another moment for me that was like a standout in that show overall i really really enjoyed this show and i was very glad that i finally got to see it obviously it's december now so it has closed but when i had gone to see it they only had a few weeks so maybe like a month left of the show because i'd seen it in september and it was closing and i believe October so I was really really glad to have been able to see that show before it did. Things that maybe I didn't enjoy so much I didn't realize there were only eight songs in each act so I feel like it dragged out a little bit for me sometimes which I know that's just my opinion it might have also been because at the time I was tired I'd just been traveling all day on the train and then going to see the show in the night so that might have played a part a little bit but yeah it just felt a little bit like it slowed the pace down of the show sometimes like <sighs> I don't know do you know what I mean by that like they'd be really like bang like really good moments and then there'd be scenes that were just a little bit too long I don't know that's just my opinion that's just how I felt about it so sorry about that but in general I loved the show and yeah at the end of the show with the bows all of the casts I don't know if it was because they were closing soon um but they all just looked so emotional and like so into it and like so grateful and like they just really loved their jobs and I found that really lovely to see and I just moments like that in theatre just make me really happy because like you can really tell how much the job means to them especially in this instance where they knew that they were going to be finishing that job soon I think it made it all so much more important for them and special to them so getting to share that with those actors was just a nice moment so yeah those are my thoughts on Gear Evan Hansen stay tuned <laughs> later on in the video for my thoughts on Come From Away and on Hamilton what you'll be seeing in the next few clips are uh, well it seemed that i was maybe going to go see frozen i thought about getting rush tickets but like i said i was too i was too tired so i thought i would just have a lazy day i also changed i was in the airbnb wasn't enjoying it so i like booked last minute like that day to go to a hotel so i had to move from one part of soho to the other to stay in a different hotel so by the time i did that i just wanted a chill day so what i did was I treated myself to a trip to the Disney store. There's only one Disney store in the UK now, and that is in London, the flagship store. So I thought, why not? It would be rude not to while I was there. 
yeah stay tuned to see if i bought anything i have to be very restrained um i love disney merchandise and having three whole floors of disney merchandise was very exciting and very overwhelming did i buy anything who knows you'll have to find out and then i just got myself ready to see hamilton which i was very excited about it was going to be at like 7 30 that night and um, obviously it was a bit further away in London from where I was staying in Soho so I had to get ready early for that to like make sure I was there and like have food so yeah you'll see me getting really excited about that and finally being excited about being in the room where it happens I had to say that really didn't I sorry about that cheese but yeah I hope you enjoy the next few clips and then you'll see me probably near the end of the video talking about my thoughts on Hamilton and come from away after I see them so I'll see you at some point soon. Enjoy the rest of the video. proud of myself it was three floors of pure disney magic and i did not buy a single thing there i guess because in my mind i'm going in january to disney world so i can buy all of my merchandise then also probably going to be going in f march to disneyland paris so even more merch then really so i feel like it was justified may not buy anything this time around but <laughs> i'm just surprised i went into a shop that is purely for disney and i did not buy anything like what i did however buy myself hold please a chocolate fudge cake and a cup of tea from cafe nero because i haven't had tea since this morning that was a while ago now because it's now like three something so I thought I'd get my energy levels up a little bit before I get myself ready to go see Hamilton tonight. I'm gonna have to find myself somewhere to eat something, something quick to go because I don't want to sit in a restaurant by myself. That's a bit sad. Ah, that's too hot, too 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 hot, too hot. And then I'm gonna go see the show. But yeah, I'll I'll keep you updated with that. So see you in a bit. I am all ready for Hamilton. Thought I'd dress a little bit fancy tonight because why not so i'm gonna head there a bit earlier so i can go and get myself a little bit of food and then we're gonna go see the show i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait i'll see you in the theater
everyone, it's me again in another inserted clip talking about the shows that I had seen in London. Like the one from before, um, obviously I'm in a slightly different outfit from last time, I said I would be looking the same as I did in the last um, video from the future, that I would look the same. I don't look the same, this is a different day actually, um, that's because my camera died after I'd filmed the part about Dear Evan Hansen and I haven't been able to film anything else since then. So here I am, two days later. But yeah, this time I'm talking about Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen. So I will talk about Hamilton first. And let me just tell you, it exceeded all of my expectations that I could have ever had for a musical like, ever. Like it was just that good. It was incredible. Obviously I have listened to the soundtrack many a time, like a lot and I'd seen it on Disney Plus because they have a pro shot now with the original Broadway cast on Disney Plus that they put on during the pandemic. But seeing it live, it just hits so differently. Like the sound um, effects, the lighting, the songs, the energy that the performers put into it, the choreography, the staging, the sets, the different interpretations that the people have of the characters, the ensemble, it was all just, like out of this world incredible and I just it blew me away it was just that good seeing it live and I also was sat in the second row of the theatre which was very close to the action so you could literally see how much they were putting into the show like you could see the sweat dripping off their faces you could see all of the emotions on their faces you could just you could see everything. I enjoyed being that close. Um, I hadn't been that close before. I, I might actually, I'm saying that I might have been that close to the Heathers when I saw it in the West End in like 2018, but I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure this is the closest I've ever been. And yeah, I'd not had that before where they were like right there playing their characters and you know, saying their lines and singing their songs like at you. Cause like, obviously when you're far away, you can see that they're doing that and that they're like acting to certain points of the theatre or audience members or whatever but like actually being the audience member that they're doing that for <laughs> it was a bit like whoa it was pretty cool though like I really enjoyed that um and I you got quite a lot of eye contact um because of that and I will say and I was getting very flustered about this a little bit overwhelmed I didn't know what to do with myself over it um I was getting a lot and when I say a lot I mean like a lot of eye contact from Alexander Hamilton himself. I didn't know what to do with myself because the main man himself was looking at me a lot of the time. It wasn't like just like quick glances here and there like sometimes you do when you're like in the middle of saying a line or whatever. It was like like direct, like interlocking with me and my eyes, eye contact. And it was just, it was quite a lot. I was like, Alec, hello, what are you doing? Like it would be like, like in, the, in the middle of a song he'd like look over and just like stare at me or a lot of the time when it was like the cabinet battle scenes where he was like waiting for um thomas jefferson jefferson words thomas jefferson to finish saying his rap like he would like be like just staring at me and i'd be like are you okay i don't know if it's just something that he does to like focus himself or if it helps him to like direct what he's saying to certain people in the audience but it seemed like he was doing it quite a lot and I was like I've not experienced this before, I'm very overwhelmed, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like am I supposed to like stare back and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, it was it was a lot. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm looking at notes again because like I said before, the video didn't work out, so I was having to watch back what I had said about the shows. So I'm going to be doing that again with Hamilton and Come From Way, so that's what I'm doing right here. The show in general was just so incredible because um, we had a lot of covers on. Oh, I forgot to get the programs. Bear with me a second while I go and get the programs, and then I will continue on this in just a second. Because I don't know the names of the people that I saw. Bit with, bit with, bit with. <laughs> I've returned. Hello. Nice to see you. As I was saying, we had a lot of covers on um, and they were absolutely insane, like so impressive. So we did not have Jake Halsey Jones as John Lawrence slash Philip Hamilton. Instead, we had Ashley J. Daniels, which is um, this person just here. Um, and I didn't realize that until after the show. <laughs> but when I was looking through the program, I was like, wait a second, we didn't have that guy as our Philip and Lawrence. We had 
this guy so the fact that i didn't even realize yeah he was very very good and he did make me cry both times he gets unalived so great performance from him we didn't have principal angelica skyler who is usually played by alison ava brown we instead had maya brito uh can you where is she she's this one just here um sorry about the lighting being weird uh she was the one that played her in west end live this year so she was very good too she was very very good actually and then we also did not have principal king george who is usually played by joel montague carry up fletcher's fiance where is he just here instead we had aaron lee lambert which is this guy just here and now let me let me have a conversation with you about king george um i don't know if it was just because you know he's a standby so he's not always on for that role or if he hadn't been on for that role period with it being a new cast and everything but um he was very very funny anyway but after i believe it's i know him and then it goes into the ronald pamphlet uh he does like a little dance thing and basically what happened was he made aaron burr laugh he corpsed because yeah like i said i don't know if you've seen him do that kind of dance before or if he just like went for it and was like you know what? i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna do this weird dance and hope for the best and hope somebody finds it funny and they did um aaron burr found it funny because he like walked sort of into his position i guess for that part of the song <laughs> looked over to his right to look at king george and then started laughing and then couldn't get his lines out properly for the part of the song that he was supposed to sing and it was just really funny like obviously the cast were trying to like keep it together so that not all of them were laughing and it was yeah they were all just like looking at him like oh my god i can't believe he just did that and then the audience obviously were like laughing quite a lot because one of the main characters had started laughing and it was just really really funny uh, I'm so glad I was there for that moment because it was just, it was iconic, let me tell you. Um, and it's memorable. It's going to be something that I'll remember from seeing this show now. Anyway, that was that guy. He was a very good King George. And then let me talk to you about what happened after the interval. So we had those cast members up until, up until that point. Um, and then we were sat in the interval. And just before the show came on, they announced that Trevor Dion Nicholson... Nicholson? Nicholas. What's his name? Trevor Dion Nicholas would not be returning in Act 2 to play the role of King George because of an indisposition, I believe they said. And that instead, another person was going to be taking over the role. So we saw two George Washingtons in one show. How cool is that? Like, some people would be a bit like, oh god, but I found it amazing that we got to see two different people and two different takes on one role in one show and the fact that somebody was able to just take over like that like in the interval oh yeah by the way you're gonna be playing george washington one of the main characters you know um in the next act okay um and it was where is he let me find him for you in the program manaya glassy olsen you see uh this guy just at the bottom here and let me tell you he was so very good and obviously after act two like they go like straight into it george washington's right there so the fact he had to walk on but also i found it quite funny because he was noticeably like younger than trevor or he's supposed to be older he's like a pre the president he's a lot older than a lot of these like a hamilton and like uh jefferson and burr all of these characters he's supposed to be notably un older but he would be like calling hamilton like son and i'm like you literally look like you could be brothers <laughs> you look the same age but i found that quite amusing but yeah uh, the fact that he had to go on in act two and then go on to sing one of my favorite songs in the show which is one last time because that is a big big song and an iconic song and um the fact that he had to come on then and sing that song was just very impressive the crowd reaction that he had received after that song so much applause so many like cheers after that because of how well he did having to come in and cover that role midway through the show was just 
and I think after the show as well, after the bows when they were all leaving the stage, all of the cast were like like patting him on the back and being like, woo, because they were happy for him and that he did such a good job in that part of the show. So yeah, lots of amazing covers were on. Very impressed with that and how well they all did. And considering they were re relatively new into the show as well, I think they'd only been in it for a few months or so. So I was, yeah, very impressed with the cast, the songs and everything were just incredible. Overall, 10 out of 10 would recommend and would go see that show again because I just thought it was outstanding. And yeah, I just adored it. And I was really, really happy that I finally got to see it. And it was so, so worth it um, because we had such a stellar cast and I just adored this show. So if you can go see Hamilton, I know it's very expensive. Go see it though, because I would highly recommend that show. This is the come from away segment of the video and then it will be the end of me cutting in and the end of the video in general. So all I have to say to start off with is I didn't really know much about come from away. I had listened to a couple of songs from the soundtrack and I do like the very basic story of what it was about and what it was based on and like what was gonna be happening in the show. But other than that, I hadn't really seen much about it. I just knew that I'd heard a lot of people rave about it and talk about it and say how good it was. Um, so I was really excited about seeing it. And I knew that it was gonna be good because it was a small cast, um, but a very, very strong cast. And the music that I had heard, I knew that it was gonna be really good. I liked the vibe of the music. A lot of it was like acoustic-y or like folky. And I really liked that about that and the band were really good too like they were actually on the stage towards the back of the stage a little bit more the whole show so you could see them which i liked as well because obviously usually um the orchestra or the band or whoever is playing for the show are usually like in the pit do you actually have a part of the show too um which i found was really exciting to see them actually like be in the show and as, as if they were part of the ensemble they just had such a good vibe about them and they were a really good band i really ugh. I just thought they were very very good so that was nice that we got to appreciate them and the way that they perform in a show because you don't usually see the musicians that much and i also i knew like i said i knew it was a small cast but i sort of forgot that they would be playing more than one role i assumed that they would play one and then and maybe a few of them would play like one or two roles but they all played at least two or three roles which i found to be very impressive and the way that they did it was very seamless and very clever. I always thought it would be a bit like messy and all over the place and you wouldn't be able to really understand what was happening, but no, you could. Like the way that they did like very quick like changes in the scene so that you would be able to establish like that, oh, this is a different character now. Oh, this is a different part of this place that's happening in now. And I just thought it was very, very good. I love the way that they did that. Um, so I was very impressed with that. If you don't know what Come From Away is about, I'll explain that a bit now, but it was, a very heavy topic and then a very emotional show. Basically what happens is it's set um, during the time period where planes had to be redirected from America to Canada to a place called Ganda in Newfoundland during the 9-11 terror attacks on New York. And it's basically about how this little town <laughs> that is so tiny with not many resources had to all pile and band together to accommodate all of these people, like hundreds of planes and hundreds and hundreds of passengers who were scared and didn't know what was going on and they just wanted to get home to their families. And obviously they didn't really know what was going on in New York either. They didn't sort of have any kind of awareness of why they were being redirect redirected. And they basically had to get everything as, as much together as they could to be able to accommodate these people and um, help them and it was just such an uplifting story. I found it so lovely to see how they all came together and how strong a community message it was and friendship, how basically it just meant that these people were just being so selfless and ready to help people that were in need. Like they didn't know what was going on themselves but the fact that they were willing to just drop everything they could to help people that were in a worse off situation than them was just incredible to see and the, the message of hope was very strong and I really loved that. I didn't expect to come away from that show 
feeling as positive as I as I did from that topic I thought I would be obviously it was very sad in some parts and I did cry in some parts but I wasn't expecting to come away feeling the way I did from that show I was expecting it to feel a lot heavier than it did on me but no but I felt very positive it was yeah it was a good feeling and I I really enjoyed that side of the show. We had quite a few covers on, it seemed to be the theme of my trip to London. So we did have a cover on for Beverly. So Alice Fern usually plays Beverly. We did not have Alice Fern. We had Chiara Bur Baronti. This one just at the top there, will it focus is another question. There she is. She played Beverly when I saw the show. We did not have the principal Janice and others, who is usually Emma Salvo. Instead, we had Helen Civita, which is this one just here. And then I'm assuming, because I don't remember this person being in the show, we had somebody on for Bob and others. And it, it was this guy just here, who is Ash Rossity. And let me tell you about Ash, because I didn't realize this until he appeared on, I follow an account on Twitter called West End Covers, West End Understudies, basically it talks about the people um, who are going on for different roles in different West End and touring regional productions of UK shows, plays, musicals, etc. And I just happened to come across it and found out that it was his West End debut and like show debut in that role the day before I saw it. So the fact that I didn't even notice that he was so good you would never have been able to tell and that just really is a testament to covers, swings, alternates, standbys, understudies in the industry because they really are the backbone of the community. Shows would be nothing without them sometimes and they would be really stuck without them sometimes because sometimes they do really carry the show and the fact that I didn't even realise that this guy was not a principal cast member and that he had only just started off in that role fully like the day before was just, I just applaud him. But yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed the show and the music and the takeaway message that it gave you, um, you know, of the hope that these people gave each other and the friendships and the bonds and the connections that they formed within that short period of time uh, and a perseverance of kindness and it just had all round general good vibes to the show. I was very sad it's closing in January which is next month 2023. However, at the time when I watched it I didn't know there was rumours about it being on a tour possibly after it closed in the West End but now that I have filmed this in December of 2022 I saw it in this September of 2022 they are going on tour in the UK which is very exciting so if I can I might try and catch that or bring somebody with me because I think they would really enjoy it and I would definitely see the show again but yeah those were my thoughts on all of the shows that I managed to see while I was in London and all I thought was a very successful trip and yeah loved loved it loved the shows was very happy to have seen them finally especially considering two of them were closing permanently in the west end i will say though my favorite of all of them was definitely hamilton but yeah that's all i have to say on the shows i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and for continuing to support my channel as we're coming into the end of 2022 now i just want to say thank you for all of the likes, comments, subscribers. I'm very, very close to 500 subscribers. I'm hoping I can reach 500 by the end of the year because I currently have, let me just have a look, 491 subscribers on my channel as of December the 14th, 2022. So hopefully I can reach 500 by the end of the year. If not, maybe I'll start off next year strong with 500 subscribers, but I just am always so impressed and grateful and like blown away by the fact that people do enjoy my channel and my content and my videos so thank you so much for that but yeah uh i hope you have a good christmas or holiday season or however you celebrate december and that you have a very happy and healthy new year and i will see you soon because next month i'm going to disney world so you will get a lot more content in the next coming weeks, months, however long it takes me to edit those videos because I am vlogging of my trip in January to Disney World. So I can't wait for that. I love watching Disney vlogs myself. So I hope you're okay with them being on my channel because I know I would want to watch those memories back personally. So 
yeah i'll see you again in another video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel if you're not already and yeah i'll see you again next time bye